We now look at further asymmetric battles. In these battles the tactics were a simple firefight with no tactical finesse. Red and blue have randomly assigned troop numbers from 10 to 20 and troop qualities from good, average and poor as shown in this table. This produced widely ranging fighting strengths between the two opponents and in all cases the battles went to the side with the higher fighting strength. We draw your attention to battles 20, 25 and 29. In battle 20 we have the same good quality troops for red and blue, with red having 12 troops and blue having 20. With the same fighting efficiencies the battle goes to the blue side with higher numbers. In battle 25 we have average quality troops for red and blue, with red having 16 troops and blue having 20. With the same fighting efficiencies the battle again goes to the blue side with higher numbers. In battle 29 we have poor quality troops for red and blue, with red having 20 troops and blue having 14. With the same fighting efficiencies the battle goes to the red side with higher numbers. This suggests that when fighting efficiencies match, having higher numbers matters as the theory suggests. Across all the asymmetric battles in runs 1 to 34, the outcome was correctly predicted using the pre-contact fighting strength indicator for 33 out of 34 battles or 97% of the total. Plotting the percent survivors predicted versus the percent survivors measured is shown for both red and blue forces. The values for the correlation coefficient in these plots are significant at the 99% confidence level, so we can be confident that the relationship for the percent survivors predicted is working in the game. We now look at symmetric battles. In these battles the tactics were a simple firefight with no tactical finesse. Red and blue have identical troop numbers from 10 to 20 and troop qualities from poor, average and good as shown in this table. This produced matching fighting strengths between the two opponents in each battle and we might expect from the theory that using deterministic and continuous firing both sides mutually annihilate each other until close to the end. In Lanchester's own words. In the case of equal forces the two conjugate curves become coincident, there is a single curve of logarithmic form, the battle is prolonged indefinitely. Since the forces actually consist of a finite number of finite units, instead of an infinite number of infinitesimal units, the end of the curve must show discontinuity, and break off abruptly when the last man is reached, the law based on averages evidently does not hold rigidly when the numbers become small. Beyond this, the condition of two equal curves is unstable, and any advantage secured by either side will tend to augment. Since Mobius Mayhem has an exchange of fire that is sequential and stochastic, inevitably resulting in asymmetric numbers of forces evolving during the battle, one side will prevail, although we cannot know which. In these battles we give first salvo advantage to the defending blue force. Let's look at battles 38 and 39. In both battles the number of troops is equal with 12 each side. In battle 38 the troop qualities were both poor, and red wins the battle. In battle 39 the troop qualities were both average, and blue wins the battle. Overall out of 15 battles, red won 6 and blue won 9, suggesting a slight first salvo advantage is in play in the game, and a bias towards the blue defending force, especially when one considers the percent remaining units left at the end of the battles. By this measure, when red won their battles they had fewer percent remaining units compared to the battles that blue won. We now look at nearly symmetric battles. In these battles the tactics were a simple firefight with no tactical finesse. Red and blue have troop numbers from 7 to 17 and troop qualities from poor, average and good with pairs of red and blue forces matched to give nearly identical fighting strength but with a slight bias towards blue based on whole numbers of troops. 
Let's look at battles 51 and 52. In battle 51 red has 14 poor quality troops and blue has 10 average quality troops, and a fighting strength each of about 33. Red wins the battle. In battle 52 red has 17 poor quality troops and blue has 10 good quality troops, and a fighting strength each of about 50. Blue wins the battle. Stochastic behavior in fire exchange leads to the balance of forces swinging to one side, and thereafter, Lanchester's insight supply. Taylor introduced the concept of combat or fighting intensity, which is the root of the product of fighting efficiencies for red and blue in the combat. It is expected that the higher the fighting intensity the shorter the duration of the battle as casualties accrue more quickly. Taking all the battles in the study and plotting the fighting intensity at the first point of contact for fire exchange in the battles against the number of moves that the battle lasted gives an inverse relationship as expected. Increasing the fighting intensity decreases the number of moves that the battle lasts. The slope in the relationship shown is significant at 99% confidence. In conclusion the paper shows that Mobius Mayhem is a simple to learn and quick to play fire and maneuver war game. It has playable scenarios as suggested in the paper with results that helps explore Lanchester's equations for people with non-mathematical backgrounds, despite being stochastic, and having sequential turns between sides with fighting efficiencies scaling with distance. The battle outcomes from initial fighting strength at the longest mutual combat range predicted the final result 33 out of 34 times across the asymmetric runs. This indicates it is a good prognosis for eventual battle outcome in Mobius Mayhem. In the symmetric games, once attrition swings the force balance to one side the fighting strength in combat is also a good prognosis for eventual battle outcome. The percentage of survivors in an individual battle in the game appears to be broadly correct from the theory in the case of asymmetric fighting strength battles. The time for combat to end with victory for one side scales inversely with the fighting intensity as Taylor's work suggests. Overall the game appears to follow Lanchester's equations, despite differences in assumptions with the pure theory.